Right, why don't we um, go ahead and get started. So uh, hello everyone, and thank you for coming to the last of these uh, digital sessions. I uh, really appreciate everyone coming along. Um, and today's session is with Chris Charnley from Charnley Communications, and it's about uh, local PR. Um, given everyone's, or the announcement today that cinemas are now officially allowed to be reopened as of the 4th of July, uh, PR is gonna be a really important topic. Um, so we're really lucky to have Chris uh, joining us. So Chris, I will hand over to you. Hi, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for obviously asking me to take part. Um, for anyone who's kind of taken part in these sessions before, I think I, I will run it a little bit differently. Um, I'm not somebody to kind of um, to, to stand on ceremony and kind of tell you what I think is best and based on experience. I'd rather kind of maybe use this time um, to be a little bit more collaborative. Um, so obviously I encourage questions, challenges, ideas, discussion at any point. Um, and that's certainly how I framed today's discussion. I have a, a slide with a couple of uh, pointers and a framework to talk through, but it's very much kind of making the time available to chat to people about what is you know, helpful to them. Um, to kind of recap on who we are and kind of my background. So um, as Jess mentioned, I run an agency called Charlie Communications. We are a entertainment kind of specialist agency. Um, we work with all kinds of entertainment clients from your, you know, film distributors at Universal, Disney, um, 20th Century Fox, on kind of everything from theatrical to home end and now platform um and we work on kind of all of their big big campaigns um but prior to that i was heading up publicity and social media for cine world cinemas so i have kind of an, an extensive background in understanding pr from both an exhibit and a distributor perspective so today kind of felt like a a really great uh, really great point to come together but also more poignant now that cinemas have been given the go-ahead to kind of reopen um, and I appreciate Cine World and their you know huge positioning and offering is very different to some of the smaller businesses and cinemas in the UK so I kind of wanted to kind of uh, share a bit of experience but also look at what we can do at more of a local level um, but that's us that's kind of why I'm why I'm here rather than you thinking you know who's this guy what's he got going on um, but as I said, I want it to kind of be collaborative. So, I, you know, everyone's got their mics turned off, which is very polite. But if there are questions, do interject. Um, I'm going to jump into the presentation. Like I said, it's just structure for discussion. Um, hopefully we won't. If you've, if you've no. got any, sorry, now I'm going to jump in. Um, if you've got any questions as well and you don't want to shout out, uh, feel free to put them in the chat box up in the right-hand corner and I'll, I will read them out. Fab. There we go. Um, I'm going to try and load the screen. Can you see the presentation on screen yet? No, not yet. It's always the way. It always works in rehearsal. And uh... There we go. Yeah, there we go. Great, Fab. Um, so, you know, I've already talked about who we are. Um, you know, we've been going for the last three years. We specialize in entertainment uh, with more of a digital skew, but it's very much PR through and through. Um, in terms of what I wanted to cover off today, um, there's kind of three areas and it's more around, you know, the challenges facing UK cinemas and, you know, how, how they can overcome what they are at both a local level and kind of wider. Um, a couple of tools for building PR plans. So, you know, overcoming and addressing those challenges. And then, you know, with my team, we've outlined some support that we'd like to make available to, you know, smaller cinemas and businesses kind of in the, the weeks and months ahead. Um, so we can chat through what that looks like. Um, jumping straight in, you know, the, the current state of UK cinemas, you know, um, Today, they, you know, it was announced shortly, you know, long ago that, you know, cinemas can reopen. Um, I appreciate that might not be the same situation. Some cinemas might be in a position where actually this call will be really beneficial around using PR to, you know, put together a fight to save 
a local cinema you know if the funding isn't there how do you rally people locally versus some people might be ready to to throw open their doors so everybody's in a different position um so i kind of wanted to to maybe open it up now already to see if there was uh you know what type of people were here you know what type of perspective they were looking at so i can maybe tailor some of the session now um or you know just continue as normal so you know um the the people that are obviously here now is there anybody from a local cinema and kind of what's their story if there are any questions i can see so i can hear someone unmute their microphone or is that just jess <laughs> no that's me hello hi hi can you hear me yeah, I can hear you. Sorry, I can't see you because I've got my presentation up, but fire away. What's your name? Um, my name's Corinna and I'm from um, the Palace Cinema in Broadstairs in Kent. Great. Hi, welcome. Hello, thank you. Um, and yeah, just to say we are a single screen cinema, 111 seats, um, and we are not opening on the 4th of July. Um, and uh, yeah, we're looking probably at September but TBC. Okay. Fab. Um, well, I think there's a lot within the, the session today that you guys can look at, um, you know, later on down the line. I think there's also going to be a lot of opportunity to learn from what other sites and businesses have done. Um, mm -hmm. But hopefully you find, you know, today's session useful. And, you know, uh, in particular, we'll, we'll chat more later about what support we could look to offer you Great. if needed. Thank you. Wanted. Lovely. No, Thanks a lot. Very well. Um, anybody else or should I just jump straight into it? Oh, someone unmuted. They muted again. Fab, should I just jump straight in? Sure. Fab. So in terms of the role of PR, it really is about how you can get the best value for your business and cinema. Um, so for me at a local level, PR has kind of three, three principles and three roles. You know, it can create a face and a presence for cinemas within the community, you know, um, regardless if it's a local Odeon or more of a, a niche bespoke independent cinema in your local community, they are, they are prominent figures and the people who work within them are very much a part of the local community. And I feel like, you know, PR is part and parcel of that. Uh, you know, local cinema managers know all of the local, um, you know, members of the community, the regulars, the people who come in day in, day out, you know, for the years gone by, they know local businesses. Um, so for me, cinemas really do feel an important part of the community. And I think PR has a, a great deal that it can do to leverage that. Um, and people have missed it. Um, I think local PR has a, a real role right now reassuring uh, cinema goers and general members of the public that cinemas are a safe space. Um, you know, there will be various different measures, you know, brought in, um, but cinema is, you know, and continues to be a safe environment. Um, and then third, it's a tool about helping drive awareness and creating change. You know, if you're in a position where your cinema is finding it difficult to open because of economic factors um you know you can use pr to rally people for support uh, more so now than ever people are very interested in local businesses and keeping them alive and for those that are finding it difficult and may not be able to reopen pr can be a real tool to get that awareness out there and to rally the community so for a local level these kind of really felt like three prominent factors and then, you know, if, if that's kind of the opportunity, the challenges that lie at a local level in terms of the new normal are these four points. You know, customers are thinking, will my local cinema be reopening again? Um, you know, today it's been announced that they reopen. You know, we're seeing, you know, that other cinemas will open later. There'll need to be some clarity to, to customers about what's happening and where and making sure that people are, you know, um, engaged when your opening time comes. We've already talked about safety. You know, it's a prominent question. Um, people won't be rushing out until they know it is safe. Cinema experience is so unique. You know, it is a very special experience. It's why it stood the test of time. Will it be the same? You know, regular fans and cinema goers, you know, the, the experience is so special. 
having something that doesn't quite live up to that will be an impact. Uh, so, you know, what does that cinema experience look like? How does COVID and the measures to protect people from it impact the screen? Um, you know, we've seen in recent days, there's been a huge inconsistency in terms of US operative cinemas where some cinema chains have announced that they're asking customers to wear masks, then they're asking them not versus other people aren't. Some are, um, you know, what does that look like uh, as an experience? And then we come down to product and slate. So all of the entertainment headlines have been dominated by films being pushed back, moved into 2021. Um, so what is coming out? Can we entice people with existing slate? Do we need to educate them about what we're showing um, and focus on what is coming in the weeks ahead? So these are four very kind of serious considerations within kind of our cinema goings audience. Um, we need to look at how we can address those. And feel free if you feel like there's, you know, if there's a, a fifth or a sixth point that you want addressed as part of this workshop, then, you know, feel free to jump in. If we've got those four points, those are the concerns, how, how can we combat them? And for me, it's kind of using PR to primarily our message is offering reassurance. Um, that can be done by showcasing the new cinema experience. So demonstrating the measures, the changes, things that, you know, for now will become the new normal within that screening environment. Um, Highlighting the current slate, you know, Cineworld are bringing back Star Wars. Um, some people are bringing back, you know, older films, but also they're, they're really focused on the bigger films that are in the pipeline for the rest of this year, like Mulan, No Time to Die, Wonder Woman. Um, you know, there is a lot coming. Uh, we just need to remind people of these new times. And then, you know, being on hand to answer all questions in person and online, you know, people do have questions they need answering there is a lot of uncertainty and i think being able to have somebody and a team within a cinema that's able to deal with people physically at a social distance um but also being able to manage things online through you know social media i'm a big believer in the fact that if you use social media to market your business you have to prioritize spending enough time engaging with customers back and you know, Facebook pages, Instagram accounts will be flooded with questions, you know, once announcements around openings are being made or, you know, even this afternoon's announcement, I'm sure that there's questions for people to get back to and, you know, update, even if it's, you know, we're still working on this, we'll be in touch soon. It's still an important update to get out there to people. Um, I think that's demonstrated by, you know, the larger chains, Cineworld Cinemas and Picture House, whilst yes, they're operated by the same group, they're the only cinema chain at that level that has come out with any communication around reopening, what it might look like uh, versus everybody else has been silent and tonally deaf um, and hasn't really reassured customers. So there's, there's a learning there. Jumping in, you know, we've talked about Cineworld. This is kind of some of their communications around, um, you know, what their changes are in terms of an experience, reassurance around the measures that they're taking. Um, they announced... I think it was at the weekend that they were reopening on July 10th and they announced it via their social media in a fun and cheeky way. And then they served lots of detail and information. You know, they've made this great graphic that talks about, you know, the eight things that they're doing to ensure safety. And for people who have further questions or need more detail, they can explore it. And that's what the panel to the right is, you know, it details all of these new measures that are already happening. Um, and it gives customers a really good visual representation of how things might look. Um, and I think the language that Cineworld here has used is great. You know, um, it's very much about we're learning in this new and unprecedented time. And, you know, things will be continuously reviewed. Your safety will be first. And it's ended with, you know, thank you for a continued passion for cinema. Um, I think that's great that you know, they're ending on a collective. Um, there's a lot to be learned here. It's concise, it's informative, it's on brand. Um, and they're leaving it open to address more concerns and questions as things develop. Um, I don't know if there's any questions around what Cineworld have presented in their kind of opening communications. Chris, I'll chime in here um, quickly. I think one of the things that's really great about this Cineworld um, info is that the graphic, whilst the graphic might be a bit kind of beyond um, everyone's reach, the 
I think what they've written about is really accessible. And I think, um, you know, anyone can put that on their Facebook page or on their website. I think it's it's just super important that they've listed every single thing that they're going to be doing. And they're kind of trying to address any questions before they happen. And I think, you know, Chris, Chris mentioned some stuff about reassurance. And I think things like even taking, you know, if you're putting in a Perspex screen at your, um, at your concessions counter, take a picture of that and post it on your Facebook page or on your Instagram so people can visually see what it's going to look like and that that you know both the staff and the and the customer will be safe. And that doesn't cost anything. That's just a picture of what the screen is going to look like. But I think it goes a long way to to communicating that safety aspect. So, yeah. mm, absolutely. I think it's almost a case of um you know Cine World put their customers first with this announcement. You know, they they put it on areas where they consume information first and foremost you know they announced on social media across their facebook twitter instagram then there was a short email followed which had all the information on the website then they managed you know they did their press announcement so press then followed and i think that really worked well with customers it, it won back some favor um you know we you know city world is uh, a great company but you know they haven't gone through this unscathed and i feel like the way that they have reapproached this is is very transparent it's informative and it's 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 clear you know as jess says not everybody has thousands and thousands of pounds to spend on big marketing but you can learn from these visuals and find your own way of approaching um picture house you know have taken a less visual um you know approach uh however their audience is very different they're very driven on facts less fuss um what they have done is they've they've integrated a bit more about the slate you know in terms of film that's coming this year just to keep people engaged um but again it followed the same approach you know announcement on social followed by a newsletter um you know to ensure that audiences um you know were aware of what was going on um and i think that those principles can be adopted um you know very similarly we'll we'll talk about later as well about you know pulling this information together if there's support needed then we're happy to to jump in because again both businesses have huge marketing departments um but you know these can be you know quite nicely put together at a local level so i think you know looking at how we can take some of these learnings and make them relevant at a local level i think for us there's three stages. So right now, pre-opening, you know, everybody's thinking about, right, what does it look like? Um, what what can we do in order to be clear and consistent? You know, um, there will be so much to consider operationally that I can imagine PR and marketing is probably a little bit of a priority down the line. However, it is important. And I think when looking at, you know, a pre-opening strategy, you know, it's our recommendation that, you know, there be one person within a cinema, um, you know, within each business that kind of leads on things in terms of PR. You know, they're overseeing everything, they're there to manage, um, and very much a local friendly face. Uh, if that's dealing with local journalists, radio, uh, you know, uh, producers, uh, photographers, celebrities, influencers, um, or even just customers, having someone there that can consistently, you know, provide you know, effective and quick information uh, when there is potential concern. Um, as we talked about earlier, being clear is really important. Uh, consistency should always be, uh, you know, a secondary to this. Um, a lot of US cinema goers are very confused right now. Should I wear a mask? Should I not? Um, what you go out with in the beginning will be what is held to account. So making sure that your information is short, clear concise informative is a challenge but you know it will win you favors um, because you won't be having to answer a flurry of questions from press uh your local newspaper who want to support and share the news that the cinema is re reopening um like i said it's a huge pillar of the community and you'll find there's a lot of goodwill there um be seen you know appreciate that um there might be less resource behind it, but continuing to keep social media going, um, especially as we talked about, you know, the cinema reopening in August, between now and then, you know, you will potentially face competition from some of the largest cinema chains who will have opened their doors. So how can you find a way to keep people engaged? Um, you know, sharing tidbits, you know, internal behind the scenes developments and measures you're taking, introducing screens, um, you know, 
finding fun and creative ways to demonstrate the social distancing in seats. Um, you know, if it's a if it's a, a family and friends screening for young people, maybe you know you you find soft teddy bears to you know place in the seats that people shouldn't sit in. Uh, you know, when you're watching for when you're playing a kids' film, just having some you know visually engaging fun with it. But also things like you know. Um, hosting film quizzes you know getting all of your facebook fans to jump on a regular film quiz on zoom or google um you know having some fun with it and keeping the community engaged i think it's important for you to be seen and not forgotten um pre-opening i think it's an opportunity to be kind i think you know um looking at how you review and reward people who've been instrumental in the covid kind of fight is really important. It builds a lot of goodwill locally and gives you news to talk about. So, you know, NHS discounts, if they're not in place already, they should be. Um, you know, first responders, people who've been fighting on the front lines of this this challenge should, you know, should receive some recognition and rewards. And I think that will put you in good standing. Um, you know, it, it's down to you to agree what that is um, and for however long you want to run it. But it's quite common now within most local businesses and uh, larger brands to offer 50% off food and drinks. Um, and I would encourage you to to review that and see what goodwill you can create. Um, I think listening, as we talked about earlier, you know, making sure that you keep eyes and ears on social media, you're keeping an eye on you know your company inbox chatting to customers getting feedback from staff and making sure that you review your communications uh be social you know your, your press releases uh to meet their expectations because it will change you know opening day you'll have all of your diehard fans through the door and from that you know they'll be chatting to their friends about what they've seen and what's changed there'll be speculation there'll be strange questions and i think it's important to be there to kind of answer those and you know Make sure that people are really informed with what's gone on. Um, being prepared, you know, um, there will be all kinds of different uh, situations and circumstances that arise. You know, cinemas are great for accommodating a whole range of different customers, uh, differently abled. Um, you know, cinema is such a diverse and inclusive background. But some of these people come with their own challenges. Um, you know, you'll have family, single parent families. They'll need to use the bathroom. What's the process if I, you know, if I can't take my child into a, you know, into a, into a bathroom with me? Will there be a member of staff on hand to be able to look after them? Will I still be able to access, you know, the screening room if, you know, if I'm in a wheelchair? How does that impact in terms of seating, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. So it's worthwhile keeping in mind customers with different needs and making sure that there's company policy and a kind of response to people who have those questions to let you know that they've been thought about and that you're actively planned. Um, this is one of the things that we can help with longer term. Um, and then, you know, just being prepared, having an escalation point for any issues, um, you know, speculation and rumor on social media can often create a lot of news locally. So being on hand, you know, having people watching out for eyes and ears in terms of potential concerns and having them escalated internally through a rightful process. You know, if you have a member of the team that then escalates to a manager so that they can deal with the, you know, the situation appropriately, it often turns, um, stops things from turning into a bigger issue. And I think having a process in place for the team to escalate, you know, customer complaints, um, negative comments on social media, responses to communications, um, just having that process in place will save you a lot of time and turn, you know, larger issues into little molehills. Um, I really, from my experience in cinema, having that process in place was really important and it saved a lot of time. That's kind of the pre-opening stage. Is there any questions, you know, um, as, as far as I'm going through this point? I'll take the silence as a no, we'll go forward. Um, reopening, um, first and foremost, it, it's, it's quite common. Um, no opening event, uh, you know, try to avoid mass gatherings outside of your screenings where possible. Now is not the time for a big party. The, the time will come and we'll have all, you know, earned a good drink. But right now it's about keeping people, um, you know, in, in an appropriate environment that's manageable. Um, I think there are, are ways that you can approach bringing press, celebrities, influencers, you know, important figures into the community, into your cinema. Um, and that needs to be in a phased manner. Um, you know, just because you're opening on one day doesn't mean that you have to do everything in one day. You can phase in local visits from 
newspapers, bloggers, radio presenters, uh, TV producers at a local level, um, you know, across a phased phased timesheet, you know, maybe one screening every couple of days to make sure that you're not taking away from customer demand. But it's important to bring them in, show them the changes that have happened, show them, you know, talk them through the measures that are in place to give them reassurance. And then follow that up, you know, make sure that they have a full written brick breakdown of everything that's that's been done so that they can accurately report. Um, there is the option, you know, for those who want reassurance to do this privately before the cinema is open that day. Um, so that there isn't the concern around social distancing, um, you know, with a larger group. Um, but I think inviting local press, whoever that be, into the cinema is really important. It's just how you manage that in terms of your space. Um, a, a key point here, uh, and Jess touched on it earlier, photography. I think it's really important when facing and uh, having conversations with press and social media and your own channels that you have uh, you create the photography yourself and that's the photography that's used so let's avoid having uh, press take their own images um, having different members of the team take pictures and assets for social media kind of have one central uh, you know line as we talked about earlier one person who's responsible for capturing and approving everything and then you'll be able to control what is being used um, you know, there will be customers that have the best intentions of the world in the world. But if that that screen for some reason comes down or looks a bit uh, dodgy or, you know, for some reason becomes damaged, it's going to be an instant opportunity for a customer complaint. And that needs to not escalate onto social. Um, and I think it's important that any photography that you're using to market the cinema or PR is kind of pre-approved and you know what's being shared and what is kind of being presented to the world um, at a local level. I mentioned it earlier talking about celebrities and influencers. I think it's important that you look at your local champions. You know, they're largely probably customers beforehand. They're likely to come and want to see the cinema anyway. But it's important to know who's, the, who's out there and how can you widen your reach and profile by tapping into some of theirs. You know, these celebrities and influencers have thousands and thousands of followers. Um, it's a good opportunity to get them in and, you know, building some goodwill and getting them sharing, you know, the changes and the positivity that's going on. Um, oh, sorry, Chris, I'm just going to chime yeah. in there. Really quickly. On that, uh, Chris and I were discussing this earlier. I think when we say celebrities and influencers, it doesn't have to be a really big name. It could be, you know, there could be someone local that raised a lot of money for the NHS and you reward them by giving them a free screening, you know, something like that. It doesn't have to be someone... Oh, Jess, you jumped in, jumped in on my good point. That's on the next oh, slide. Spoiler. Ignore everything I said then. Just listen to myself. Uh, no, but Jess has a really great point there. Um, you know, if uh, we'll, we'll come back onto the, the positive pipeline, um, but, you know, celebrate your local heroes. Um, I'm sure we've all got stories of people nearby that have done amazing things during this time. Um, and I think... There's a great opportunity, you know, for, for management of cinema to recognise that. Um, and I think Local Heroes is a, is a great part. There'll be, you know, cinema teams, uh, members of family that have done amazing things. And I think bringing people together over a film of their choosing, um, you know, it would be a great way to foster that goodwill and to create some, some good news. Um, because the news agenda has been pretty dire recently. Um, I think the other bit, just going back, um, about positive news is, you know, the day and week you reopen, that's definitely worth talking about, you know, letting local press know um, what the response has been, what the reactions have been. Um, the likelihood is they'll probably want to send a journalist down anyway. Um, and it's important that you you manage that and make sure that, you know, people, um, you know, are managing their social distancing, customers aren't being bothered. Um, but I think that that's definitely something you want to share about. Um, keeping in mind, you know, if performance on the first opening date isn't great, um, I'd recommend looking at it as a week. Uh, you don't have to be specific, uh, specific. You don't have to go 96 customers walk through the door every hour for the last four hours. It can be more like hundreds of customers returned. Um, you know, it was a, a promising and exciting response. People were pleased, you know, to see the cinema reopen again and came in for a look. Um, I think yeah, we can we can look at how that that's all worded. Um, just post opening, we've already talked about those local heroes, but I think the key bit for me is about speculation, um, making sure that 
you know, any inaccuracies around measures taken, disgruntled customer complaints, pictures of um, shielding and, uh, you know, the, the structures that you built into cinema, um, making sure that that's, that's squashed and dealt with appropriately. A lot of that will surface on social media, but it's where local press will be looking to run, uh, you know, uh, stories. So I think it's just important to have eyes and ears out there, make sure you respond to customer complaints in an effective time or customer feedback um, and make sure that that speculation isn't uh, more oxygen than it needs. I think also it's important to take into consideration that, you know, people will still catch the coronavirus. Um, you know, there is no cure or antidote right now. Um, the rumor mill will go into overdrive if there's a potential second wave um, or even local outbreaks. Um, so it's important to make sure that if there is an issue that needs dealing with, then, you know, that that's kind of appropriately managed so that there isn't rumors going around that, you know, Mrs. Jones and her three kids caught the coronavirus by going to their local cinema. Um, that's really key to keep in mind. And again, it, it leads to addressing those four kind of principles that we set out at the beginning. Um, so those are the three stages. Hopefully they, they there's some guidance in there to kind of overcome those points. Um, kind of coming to the end of what I wanted to present. Um, but in terms of our commitment uh, as a team, you know, we love what we do. We love working with film. We love working, um, you know, with, with cinemas, um, you know, of all shapes and sizes. And we, you know, we make a commitment to, to be here in, you know, in, in time of need. So looking at how we move forward, um, we're here to, you know, support. So, you know, we're not going to disappear. Um, we're not going to pull out a rate card. We're here to kind of help you guys through the next couple of months in terms of if you need help finding the right local press contacts, um, we can source those details and pop them over to you. Uh, we can set up introductions. Um, as a team, we can be on hand to, to have a second pair of eyes on anything you're preparing. If that's your opening announcements on social media, your uh, measures that you're taking, uh, frequently asked customer facing document or some press statements. We're happy to offer a second pair of eyes, um, happy to kind of support on that. And then, you know, um, heaven forbid, touch wood, that there is an issue that potentially escalates, um, that you need, again, second pair of eyes, a bit of counsel or a helping hand in dealing with. We, we'd we really love to be there to kind of help you during that. Um, so for us, that that's the kind of support that we had provisionally thought that might be helpful to people um, kind of in, in the weeks and months ahead. So that's just our Kickstarter. If there's something that you feel like would be uh, potentially more beneficial, then, you know, we're, we're happy to help. Um, so that's just some of the, the support that we would like to make available. Um, and yeah, the, the kind of last slide is really about kind of um, any questions you guys might have in relation to what's been presented or something that I didn't cover. Um, I appreciate there is a lot to cover it's almost like a um one of those netflix shows where you get to pick a you know a certain answer and it takes you down a different route because there are so many different circumstances and i didn't want to sit here and preach i'd rather answer questions and give counsel based on what the needs are so over to you if there are any questions nope I think we now. This is great. <laughs> I think if anyone does have any questions that come into mind um, after this, feel free to get in touch with me, and I can put you in touch with Chris, or you can get in touch with with Chris directly. Um, we'll make his contact details available. Um, but I think just uh, to wrap up, thank you so much for that, Chris. That was really great and really helpful. Oh, no questions because it was so comprehensive. <laughs> we like Sorry. that. Great. Um, yeah, I think, uh, thank you everyone for participating. Um, just as a reminder, if you missed the beginning, because I saw there were a couple of people that popped in um, last minute. If you missed the beginning, this is being recorded and it will be available. Um, I will send an email out, but it will also be available on the Celluloid Junkie website uh, later this week or next week. Um, and that was our, our last session. So thank you everyone for participating. Um, it was really great and hopefully, you all took something away and that they were helpful. Great. Thank you for starting, Jess. No problem. Thanks, everyone. Have a great afternoon. Bye.